Chapter 12 is about solutions. I think we're probably all aware that if you got stranded out in the ocean, you should not drink ocean water, right? And if you've never been incredibly thirsty, you might say, well, why the heck would you want to? But you get to a certain point of thirsty, and even the nasty salt water is going to taste good. You shouldn't drink seawater because seawater is actually going to dehydrate you more than drinking nothing. Um, you could say that it's a thirsty solution. It draws more water to itself. Salt water, seawater is a solution. And in chemistry, what we mean by a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. So in ocean water, you have water, of course, and then you also have sodium chloride. That's the main salt. But there are also other salts present in the ocean. And of course, you know, a whole bunch of other things dissolved. We were talking about this at home the other day. It's like, you know, there's fish pee in the ocean, right? There's human pee, too. And, um, and then, you know, there's probably whale poop. What does whale poop look like? And my seven-year-old said, whales don't poop. <laughs> and my 13-year-old my said, of course they do. Everyone poops. Don't you remember the book? <laughs> right? Anyway, those things are all in the ocean water. We're just going to think about the water and the salt. So here's an illustration. So we've got lots of water molecules, and then we've got sodium chloride. And the sodium chloride dissolves. Do you remember what helps it to dissolve? What kind of force? Close. Dipole. Ion dipole forces. Okay. So it's a force of attraction between the dipole of the water molecule and the ion. And so that helps the sodium chloride to dissolve. So there are two parts to a solution. There's the solvent, the main part. It's usually the greater part by mass. And then there's the other things that are dissolved in it. So sodium chloride is the primary solute. That means it's a minor component. There's less sodium chloride than there is water. You can have lots of different solutes. You can only have one solvent. Nature has a tendency towards spontaneous mixing. So you've, you've probably noticed this. You know, you, you put two things together, two liquids together. Um, they're going to just mix by themselves. If we look at um, water, pure water on one side and salt water on the other side, and we put this in a tank with a barrier separating them, here we have a concentration difference. We have a high concentration of sodium chloride on one side and no sodium chloride on the other. If we remove this barrier, what's going to happen? It's going to mix. Even if you don't stir it up, even if you lift that barrier out very carefully, it's going to mix. It may take some time, but it will mix. And it will mix until it forms a uniform concentration where the sodium chloride is evenly distributed throughout the whole tank of water. Well, what happens when you drink seawater is, the, so this picture is part of your intestinal tract. Ew, gross, right? Um, there's a membrane that is called a semi-permeable membrane because it allows some things to pass through it to permeate and other things not. So it allows water to pass, but it restricts dissolved solids from passing. So here's the seawater that you drink. And here is the water in your cells. The water, the ocean water that you drink has a higher concentration of sodium chloride than what is present in your cells. Your cells do not contain pure water. They have dissolved sodium chloride as well. But nature tends to mix. And so what it's going to do is the water is able to pass through here. The water is going to pass through the semi-permeable membrane and come over into your intestine and try to dilute this salt solution. And so you're going to lose water from your cells into your gut. When you were really thirsty and you drank the water trying to get more water 
into yourselves. Any questions about that? <clears throat> 